Let's do a little bit of a 0 to 60 on it now with my draggy. See, lets it spin a good few times. This is the new Husqvarna 901 Norden, a bike I really like the look of and was really excited about it, like a lot of people, when they saw the concept of this machine. And I've been riding this, or been lucky enough to be riding this for the last week, but only on the road. So join me for a bit of a spin. I'm going to just go out exploring and see where the ride takes me, basically. If I spot a little lane that looks interesting, I'm just going to go down it. And if it turns into a dirt track, never mind. I'm on the bike for it and I've got the tyres for it. So join me when I tell you why I think this Norden is my favourite ever adventure bike. I love this thing. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea and uh, chopsy, roll the intro. So the Husqvarna Norden, as I said at the beginning, it was a bike I was really excited about when I saw the pictures of it. It looks amazing. I mean, the uh, the concept drawings of this bike and the concept bike they built, you know, looked absolutely fantastic. And then when they came out and showed the production bike, yeah, it looked more or less identical. I think they did a really, really good job of going from concept to, you know, production. Oh, there's a little dirt lane. Now I could try that one out on oh, a dead end. But, you know, I did a really good job of going from concept to production and, you know, what, what's, what's really amazed me about this bike, yeah, it's the 890 engine, the same engine which is in the, the 890 Adventure, a similar setup engine which is in the 890 Duke, you know, it's that parallel twin platform they have, it's got the sort of T-plane crank or the cross-plane crank, whatever you want to call it, you know, with that offset firing order and this bike is so punchy so even though this is only 890 cc you know and it's the middleweight adventure bike similar to the tiger 900 you know this is really powerful and it feels so punchy the official figures are 105 horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque which i think puts it above the tiger 900 from sort of power and torque but it just it's just what's there instantly on the throttle I actually think that this is as fast as a 1290 GS. I think this is as fast as a GS. It's such a punchy little bike. And because it's an 890, it only weighs 204 kilos. So, you know, it's not a massive, really heavy adventure bike. And that's what I don't like about adventure bikes, when they're big, massive and heavy things. They seem a bit unnecessary. They certainly seem unnecessary when you've got the performance this thing's got. And I've actually brought with me today my little draggy. So we're going to do a bit of a 0-60 test with the draggy. So we'll see what the 0-60 is on this bike. But I think it's going to be pretty darn respectable. I've also got on today, as you probably noticed, uh, my Insta360 backpack mount. So you've probably not seen this view before, so I'm just experimenting with it really. But it's uh, a mount that mounts to your backpack. So you can get like a body mounted backpack. I think it's a new mount that Insta's got coming out. So I was sent it to me as like a little preview. So yeah, so there you go, backpack, rear camera. And then I've got the Insta360 ONE RS up front as well. So I've got a couple of new cameras on the boil today. If you want any of those cameras, I've got some affiliate links in the description, by the way, with some money off. But uh, yeah, sales pitch over. Power! Oh, if you turn the, uh, the traction control off, this thing is a wheelie machine. I mean, I couldn't wheelie the 890 Adventure. I don't know if there was something wrong with me, but I don't remember that ever being a wheelie machine. This thing's a hooligan. And even though it's got those Pirelli, oh, what they called, the same ones that were on the Tourag, Turango I rode the other week, 
and I've said they're a 50-50 mix between on and off-road. These things, and everyone said in the comments, no, no mate, those tyres, you can throw the bike around on the road with those tyres, no problem. And you're absolutely right. It really handles on these tyres. Uh, Pirelli Dragons, Pirelli, can't remember, I'll put it on the screen. But I've been really impressed with their road-based prowess and the whole machine. The suspension feels firm, it, you can throw it into corners. It's got a 21 inch front wheel. It's got, it's not got full off-road suspension like the 890, you know, the R890 Adventure. It's only got 220 millimeters of travel on the forks, whereas it's 240 mil on the uh, you know, 890 Adventure R. And the rear shock's only 215 millimeters of travel, where you've got 240 on the rear shock on the Adventure R and the same with the Tiger, you know, the Tiger R version, the rally version. So, I mean, this bike isn't going to have the same off-road prowess as its orange brother, but I think what you do have is superior road holding. So I've been really impressed with the road holding on this. It's got a 21-inch front. I'm almost like, well, put a 19 front on it. Is there a need for a 21? But we're going to take it on a few lanes today. It handles so well with that 21, then perhaps, yeah, have the 21. Because it doesn't seem to be compromised on the on the road, road holding anyway. It's very good, it's very good. It's also got a 19 litre fuel tank and it's got that same you know, ball bag design with the, with, the, with the tank. So all of the weight is right down at the bottom here. So even though you've got 19 litres, which is a litre less than the 890 Adventure, by the way, you know, it's all low down. It's all low down. And I've actually got, unbelievably, I've run the, I've had 250 miles out of a full tank on this bike, riding normally. So 19 litres, I've done 250 miles, or 255 miles to be exact on 19 litres of fuel. And I think that's incredible. 255 miles out of 19 litres for a bike when ridden normally with a punchy performance that this has got. That's, that's amazing. Amaze balls. The front brake is also really powerful on this. It's almost a little bit too aggressive. And this is something I've sort of complained about on some adventure bikes, on the Triumphs. Now their front brake on their adventure bikes is much softer and it's almost sort of too soft. And then the Ducati V4 had a really nice feel to the front brake, but it was a bit more progressive because that was obviously a full Stylema Brembo setup. This has the Zhejiang or Zhejiang brakes, you know, that KTM brand, and they've got loads of bite, but they're, they're maybe not that much feel. They're very powerful, but they're lacking a little bit of feel. Triford Ipping. I don't know where I am already. This is this is what I wanted to do, you see. Just come out, there's a 30. Just come out and have a little bit of an explore. I was hoping the sun was going to be out. It wasn't, I set off, and there was supposed to be. But in great British weather fashion, the sun is hiding. As long as that wet stuff doesn't start falling out of the sky, I'm happy. The bike also has an IMU, so you've got all that lovely cornering, traction control, and all of that fantastic stuff as well. Quick shifter and blipper is standard on this as well. So it's not like the KTM where you've got to pay to unlock the quick shifter and blipper, it's included. The only thing it does have as an unlockable, what's up here, is this someone's house? Yeah, someone's house, I'm not going out there. The only thing it does have which is a, which is an unlockable is the, the Explorer mode, they call it, which would be the rally mode on the 890 Adventure R. Basically then you can have you know you can you can adjust the traction control between one to eight on the buttons and you can also have any throttle response with any power map you know so it gives you a little bit more flexibility of the electronics but i've not missed that at all and i'm if i was getting one of these i may not even bother with that if i'm honest nice little bridge here look <laughs> throttle response is very very nice on this they've, they've absolutely nailed ktm of nailed throttle response these days. There was a time a few years ago when you know you had to put up with horrible throttle responses, especially in Euro 4, but now throttle responses are just beautiful. They're like old car bikes. You know, the manufacturers have really nailed it, or most of them have absolutely nailed throttle response these days. So throttle response is perfect and it's just bang, it's just there's just so much power there. 
it's, it's, it's 100 horse, 105 horsepower bike. You know, it's, it's, it's brilliant it is. I've never been down here before. This is a great road, isn't it? It's been brilliant for the uh, SMCR as well, actually. But I love this sort of riding where you're just out. Yeah, you're not worried about what's going to happen to the surface. You know, you can't, you can't come out on your sports bike and then just go anywhere and think, oh God, oh, the sports bike. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This is what adventure bikes should be about for me. You know, this is what the sort of, and you can, you know, any adventure bike you can do this on, obviously, and that is the beauty of them. I will give you that. But most of them are a little bit too off-road focused for my liking. But even though this one is, I don't know, it's just something about it. I just don't know why I like this so much. It just works really, really well. Much better, I think, than the 890 did. I never liked the 890 as much as I like this. Maybe I'm just getting old now, I'm 50. It's appealing, adventure bikes. Bepton. No, we'll, we'll carry on this way. This is vaguely familiar now. Cocking, four miles. Diddling. Harting and Eastead. Cocking. We could go to cocking. Fancy a bit of a cocking. The heated grips are also very, very good. Oh, that's a good little lane, isn't it? I think that must have been the one that maybe fed back to that other one. But the heated grips are really hot on this. There's nothing worse than spending money on heated grips. I need to find out that they're terrible. Public footpath. Mm, yeah, that's, that's not a byway. Mm, another public footpath. Yeah, I've had a look at the front suspension and it is quite firm. It's, it's, it's got compression and rebound adjustment and individual fork legs in the normal KTM fashion. I don't think it has any preload adjustment on the forks. I don't know why KTM do that. I just don't know what is their thing about not putting pre preload on their forks. I don't get it. But you've got separate compression and rebound and they are at 30 clicks. They're at 26. So it is firm. I think this is why the bike is riding so well and it's so lovely on the tarmac because you know, it's all quite firm at the front. It's not overly firm, but I think I'm going to find it firm when it comes to going off-road. So I may wind some clicks out of it when we take it down a country lane. Uh, Thrutton, Trayford, Harting, Midhurst. Midhurst that way, is it? I is this the road I turned down just a minute ago? Have I just gone round in one big circle? Here we go, we've got a Nationals up here, so let's do a little bit of a 0 to 60 on it now with my draggy. Let me get it out. Let's get the draggy out and now. The draggy's already here, look, I've already stuck it onto the frame already, ready to go. That's the last thing we've uh, 0 to 60 tested. What was it? Uh, can you remember? What did we 0 to 60 test last time? The Tiger 660. The Tiger 660 did 0-60 and 4.67, which is really impressive, isn't it? It's got to beat the uh, the Tiger 660, hasn't it? It would be embarrassing. Cover the rear brake. Woo! That's it. Up to 60. 4.6. I could do better than that. I did try twice. With the Tiger 660. Four point two one, so just around the four second mark. Well uh, yeah, four let's call it around the four second mark with a big fatty on, with a twenty stone fatty. It doesn't sound very impressive when you say it's a little bit quicker than a, a Tiger 660, does it? But I think that just goes to show you how because that Tiger 660 is a bit less powerful, it just puts the power down a bit easier. I think that's the main, the main thing with it. Anyway, let's come out of that now. There we are. 4.21 is your official Chopsy 0-60 with the fatty aboard. So what's bad about the bike? I've been banging on about how good it is. It must be some niggles. There's a, there's a couple of very minor niggles. One is you've got these spotlights on the front which are activated with this button here and you push the button, but it doesn't tell you on the dash that the lights are on. So you don't get like a light on to show you you've got those lights on. This button does change color. This, this little button comes on, but in the, I can barely see it's on now. And if you're in sunlight, you can't tell that button's on. Afternoon, sir. So slight niggle, when that button's pressed, I'd like to have had you know something on the screen to tell me the spotlights are on. They're just on like a completely separate circuit, but yeah, okay, small, small gripe. 
talking of lights, all the switch gear is also illuminated. You've also got cruise control, which works brilliantly. But that is another little niggle, actually. When you come off the cruise control by pushing the throttle forward, it just seems to be a little delay with the cruise control turning off. Or if you go down on the button to, you know, to slow the cruise control, it's a little bit laggy. Oh, I can smell weed, someone's smoking weed back there. But it's a little bit laggy. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the only criticisms I have on this bike. I just remembered there is one more niggle with this bike. When you indicate, you just get one big indicator, both of them lighting up. So you can't tell which way you're indicating. Right or left, you get the same gist, oh, I'm indicating. Well, you've got your hazards on. It's like an old fashioned Mark III Escort, you know, we just get an indicator light. Why can't it just be a left and a right light? I don't want just indicator. <laughs> It's a minor gripe, but it irritates me. Gives it a cheap feel. But there we are, niggles done. Oh, what's this? Here we go. This will do, isn't it? Public footpath this way. It doesn't say this is a public footpath. This is hardly off road, it's just a muddy lane, isn't it? Even I wouldn't class this as off road. Bruce would. Even I wouldn't class this as off road. But stood up, that, that width, you can feel a little bit of width but on the bike. This is really bumpy, and as I say, that suspension feels very stiff. It's almost like going down steps. Now, if I was going to take it for a proper bit of off-roading, I would wind a bit of the, uh, the preload. Compression and rebound damping, I would adjust that on the front and I'd... And I'd wind it off a little bit because it's, it's very bouncy at the front it's too stiff i don't think i'm going to be here you know i think this <laughs> i don't think this is someone's field i should not be here let's get out of here this, this isn't i'm not allowed out here let's get out of here restricted byway it's a restricted byway it's probably restricted for me i would imagine on this trying to find my way back across to where I know there's some lanes so but this is this is what I wanted to do today oh no motors oh look there's a bit of off-road but no no bikes but this is what I wanted to do just explore and see you know where's this going to take me if I cut through here where am I going to be no I can't go there oh, what's up there oh that might have been something let's have a spin round it's not a byway, is it? I don't think. Oh, you can't go on any these days. It's just pointless having a bike go to go off road on because there's not going to be any lanes left to go on soon, anyway. Temporary closure of the Langerish boat. Oh, is this a lane here? I have a fancy that's a lane. Yeah, that's a lane. There's a squirrel. Public right away. No through route for motorcycles, that's new. That never used to be no through route for motorcycles. That was always open there. I've been up there many times on my Enduros. Not allowed up there on bikes anymore. Absolute garbage. No vehicles on that one, shut. No vehicles. Toads crossing. Toads crossing. Seen it all. I found a gravel track. It will have to do. Let me go into rider mode. It's only got it's got Explorer, which is that custom one I said about. Off-road, rain or street, that's it. There's no sport mode. Let's go off-road. Off-road mode. I might as well go off-road on ABS as well. Motorcycle, ABS mode, off-road. So there's no ABS now on the rear. So we've got off-road ABS, off-road mode. <laughs> traction control's on. So let's see, I'm interested to see how the traction handles being on, but in the off-road mode. See, it lets it spin a good few times. So it lets you have more spinach. <laughs> spinach. Like Popeye. It lets you have more spinach than what the, uh, the Turag did. Turang, you know, the Aprilia Turag. That wouldn't let it spin at all, even in off-road mode. But that's a good, a good bit of spinach going on. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. And I'm going to have to stand up. You're going to moan at me, aren't you? Oh, 
See, I said the suspension was a bit hard, but actually, when well, this is pretty smooth, but this is just a gravel lane, you know, on. This isn't a proper, proper off-road, is it? Come on, Chops, you're calling this off-road, it's just a gravel lane. Behave yourself. But it feels nice, actually. I thought it was going to feel all a little bit too stiff, but it absolutely doesn't. So they've got this suspension really, really well-tuned, I would say. Oh, loads of punch still. <laughs> this is the beauty, eh? This is the beauty of this sort of bike. You end up on a lane like this, who cares? It doesn't matter. You got the bike for it. Oh yeah. Yeah, even though it doesn't have the... Where's that rear brake gone? Even though it doesn't have the suspension travel of the, you know, the KTM Adventure R. It's perfect for this sort of thing, you know. If you just want to get a bike just to do off-road on, you know, or mainly do a lot of green laning on or whatever, get something with bigger suspension travel. But if you want just an all-rounds, go anywhere, do anything bike, which has got really nice road manners, and that's what I like about this bike, the road manners are fantastic, then this ticks a hell of a lot of boxes, I would say, in my view. Perfect for this sort of thing, you don't need any more than that. It's a beast. So there we go guys, the Norden 901 Husky. I think it's fairly obvious that I uh, I really like this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really, really good bike. I don't know why I prefer it so much to the 890 Adventure. I think the looks of it, it looks really cool. I love the look. A lot of people have said, oh, it looks horrible. I think it looks fantastic. I love the look of this thing. A retro-y modern, I just think it looks great. I love everything about it. I think it's my favourite ever adventure bike. I think even more so than the V4 Multistrada, just because that was a bit too much, a bit too much money, a bit too much of everything, and used a bit too much petrol. This, I'm having as much, if not more fun, riding this than the uh, Multistrada. The Pikes Peak one's a different matter, because that's a different sort of bike. But if you want a bike where you want to go anywhere, you want to be able to go off-road, you know, for the odd lane, as I said, a travel bike, go anywhere, do anything type of machine, this takes some beating. And I love the size of it. I don't want a humongously massive adventure bike that takes up my whole garage with one bike in it. This is a decent size. It's not too heavy. It's very, very good. So if you've got an option to go and test ride one of these, I highly recommend you do. It's way exceeding my expectations. I was expecting just to, to be an 890 adventure in a frock. It's just different in some way. I love it. But thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me.